With the school season starting up again, I noticed things started to get sus. People started getting revenge, but others took a big step forward as I heard some started clapping trees. Now personally, I ain't no Judge Judy, but y'all be welding out there for sure. No cap. Anyways, let me tell you guys about our brand new hero who doesn't clap trees instead. He's a monster that claps anything and everything. So for most people, they pass time by watching anime or playing video games. However, this bro has taken Master Uwe's saying of, If there's a hole, there's always a goal, literally. Even right now, our anime bro is currently playing the game of rice cake smashing with a girl named Yuna. But it turns out she ain't no ordinary girl. Nevertheless, after destroying the living daylights out of Yuna, he got her to cook up a feast just for him because apparently, this is what a true chat is like. As such, after using up a lot of energy just moments before, our hero picks up a spoon and starts cosplaying his favorite mukbang YouTuber, leaving the delicious food no chance to defend themselves. Later, after easily devouring the entire feast by himself, he turns back to find Yuna and whispers if she would like to play Starfield together as he's ready for round 2 of Space Rice Cake Smashing. And so the two started playing Starfield together, where our boy tries his hardest to make sure his controller doesn't randomly explode. But then he gets a message from someone's mom. Clearly the F meant they were on legendary difficulty and the 37 meant bros already 37 days in for his play time. So he begins to look a little bit worried. Nonetheless, we fast forward to the next day where we learn bro got to play space rice cake smashing with two different difficulties last night. So now he's up early to make sure he can do the right thing which is hitting the gym hard as a natty. But then out of nowhere, the sussy nation attacks as bro randomly shows up destroying a rice bag looking like he's ready to be all might. Now the even weirder part about all of this, and not including the part where he's literally clapping rice, is actually the fact that he named it Elizabeth. Unfortunately for our boy, the rice bag isn't going to transform into Elizabeth from the seven deadly sins, as the only thing his banana tree plantation is making contact with is some feathers. Nevertheless, it's further revealed that Mr. Rice Bag Lover has actually breached the power level of over 9,000 as he's apparently practiced his gaming on pillows as well for almost 10,000 tries. So I guess you could say he's a master gamer with no shame at all. So maybe that's why he's such a chad, and it's not because of the sword he's been carrying around. Anyways, as bro attempts game number 10,001, disaster strikes as his rice bag looking pillow ends up finally breaking, all due to how rough the past activities were. So maybe it was actually Elizabeth trying to escape. At this point, I thought bro was going to start weeping, but I was wrong, since he starts talking to the rice as if he thought the rice itself reached the climax of a mountain. Suddenly, enough was enough for Elizabeth as she calls in the help of Rice Kun since Truck Kun was busy elsewhere. So our boy ends up slipping not on a piece of soap, but actually on some very small rice grains. It was then, at this very moment, bro knew to never ever disrespect your rice again. But it was too late as he takes a hard fall straight to the ground. However, our boy actually somehow wakes up by himself after falling over, seemingly totally fine although there's some kind of light pouring out from behind him. After taking a moment to investigate further, our boy realizes that some kind of portal has appeared, and you only ever see those in your favorite anime. Nevertheless, you guys already know the drill, when an anime portal shows up, you clearly have to check it out so bro ends up finding an alert telling him that it's a gateway to another world, and if he enters he can never come back. Bro then starts hearing a voice repeating the alert out loud, only for him to realize that it sounds exactly like him, or so he thought. Moments later, the turntables turn, as bro decides to ignore what's in front of him as he's suddenly having the urge to check Tinder, as he forgot to destroy real targets today. He then takes a deep breath of relief as he realizes he's still on Earth, and he's got a lot of matches to tend to so everything is still normal like before. However, after closing the app, he sees a message from Yuna eerily telling him to make sure to not go home no matter what, and he needs to hide as soon as possible or else he will miss Drake's concert. Suddenly, as he finishes reading the message, a man yells out his name from his front door, so we finally learn that our boy is named Taeyang. With Taeyang not answering, the mysterious man at his front door starts banging on it and yells even louder, but Taeyang is probably thinking the dude is mistaking him for the K-pop superstar from Big Bang. Eventually, our boy relents and decides to check it out, but as soon as he's about to open the door, an axe cleanly makes it through almost giving our boy a brand new bowl cut. At the same time, a man looking like he's the older avatar pops up looking absolutely furious, but he makes it clear quickly that he's actually Yuna's husband and he's now found out about him. Personally, I think the avatar is actually the true Chad as bro ain't taking no crap from anyone and he's ready to send those who oppose him to the afterlife using some blood-bending powers. So props to the old man, oh and by the way, bro doesn't even care that he's chasing down a dude that has no armor on, so you can tell he's a man of his word no matter what. Anyways, now that Taeyang has been found out for playing too much space rice cakes on other people's saves, 
He runs to find the portal as he realizes there's only one way out. Time then slowly ticks down as the barricades he put behind him slowly get cut through with the avatar's skills, so it's only a matter of seconds until he either jumps through the portal or faces demise. Luckily for our boy though, the avatar takes a quick breather and stops to angrily ask how many times Taeyang has destroyed the rice cake of Yuna. But me personally, I wouldn't ask. Now one funny tidbit that I forgot about is the fact that Bro also is the boyfriend of the avatar's daughter, so poor Taeyang starts trying to weasel himself out of everything by using the popo -po excuse. However, Taeyang ends up digging himself an even bigger hole as the avatar gets even more mad so he starts channeling some airbending skills to scare off our boy. Seconds later, Taeyang feels an intense shockwave only for him to realize that his last defense is about to fall, and it will only take one more attack before the avatar is fully through. At this very moment, he realizes there's actually two different options. He could either enter the portal and see what happens in another dimension or take one last stand and perish while exploding inside the rice bag of Elizabeth. Clearly, it's a really hard decision for our boy, since we all know Bro is the biggest sussy baka ever. And so Taeyang decides he will take his dignity with him to explore Elizabeth one more time. But the sussy baka starts feeling some kind of intervention from the magical portal. Simultaneously, the last door gives way, where Mr. The Rock Avatar is seen being fueled by some fire-bending powers, as Bro now looks like he's the Reaper of Souls. The Reaper of Souls then stalls for a second, and begins to stare intently at our Bro, where he says Taeyang must show his banana tree right now as he needs to chop it off. However, the mighty turntables turn again just like the mighty ducks, so Taeyang ends up facing off against the Avatar. So then the mad lad actually did the unthinkable, as Taeyang went up to him only to tell him how his wife and daughter had the best Starfield review of all time, and it was so tight and rad. Then, just as I thought Bro found a way out on Earth, Taeyang ends up being the biggest coward ever and instantly jumps into the portal after talking about the other's wife and daughter. Our Bro then finds himself teleported to a massive castle, still with no armor, but as he continues to wander around, he ends up hearing what sounded like a bunch of guards. Taeyang is then quick to flee as he doesn't know if he traveled back in time, or if this is just another world in another dimension. After successfully making it out of the corridor, the guards realize that a torch got put out, so they start discussing whether or not the torch ran out of mana, where it's revealed that magic may exist in the world. Nonetheless, as Taeyang eaves drop on the guards, he suddenly hears something within the room, and notices someone toss and turn in front of him at a nearby bed. Unsure of what to do, Bro decides to do nothing and continues to eavesdrop, only to listen in on the guards totally gush about someone named Verdia sleeping. After putting one and one together to equal three, Taeyang begins to panic as he thinks Verdia is the man the guards were blushing about. So now Taeyang's worst nightmare has come true, as Bro starts to think he got teleported to a world where no women exist, causing his heart to instantly stop. Luckily for him though, his heart does a full reboot as he ends up smelling a scent he's always used to being around, which just happens to be a woman. Now that our boy has figured out that women do exist in this world, he decides to investigate further as he loves watching Detective Pikachu. Upon finishing his inspection, his banana tree plantation reverts back to its king size as he finds a beautiful girl who he promptly assumes is Verdia. Taeyang then decides to inspect Verdia even more to make sure she's not hiding any swords where you least expect it, only for him to marvel at the sight of Verdia being a prime version of herself. As such, our boy starts to look super hungry as he can't believe the first girl he ran into is actually an S-tier woman that would even give his own little rookie a challenge. However, Taeyang remembers that there's still another dude within the room, so he wonders why the two are using separate beds if he's the king. Regardless, Taeyang ventures forth closer to Verdia, as he can't help himself even if he knows this will probably send him six feet under once the king wakes up. Now taking the prime opportunity to seize the prime gates of Verdia in front of him, he evolves into his French man's self and gets ready to eat up the entire thing in front of him. And so our bro actually starts seating a sleeping Verdia with a battering ram her gates have never experienced before, but Tian gets sad as he can't believe Verdia has not awoken with his entry. Eventually, bro finds himself at 90% power and neither Verdia or the king woke up, but Verdia was instinctively following his attacks. An hour later, Verdia's computer finally wakes up from sleep mode, where she asks why her husband has been so good today. Mere moments later, Verdia finally wakes up, but she seems to love what's going on. So she warns Taeyang to pause, since if he gets found out, it's not only his tree that will get chopped. But just as you probably guessed, Taeyang was unable to stop the siege, and he kept going till the morning. And somehow the king never woke up, so Bro must have been a pretty deep sleeper. Unfortunately, the two stuck in the endless battle of destroying gates get interrupted as glass suddenly falls to the ground and splatters like Splatoon 2. 
It's then revealed that a maid has appeared to drop off the usual royal breakfast, but this time she accidentally saw the royal rice cake smashing. So now our boy knows he's totally screwed in more ways than one, but at least he's going to go out in a bang in a brand new world.